I am Moran Serf, I'm a professor of neuroscience and business. And today I'm gonna walk you through something that we all experience all the time, but we only recently began to understand fully. And that is our memory. So how do memories work? To explain that, we have to shift perspective from one thing that we all learned when we were kids that is not true. And that is that memories are kind of like files being stored in the brain. That's not the case. Tomorrow, some friends of yours might ask you, hey, what did you learn yesterday? And you will say, oh, I learned something very, very interesting about memories. Let me share that with you. In doing that, you will open the file that you created right now with this experience and move it to a different part of the brain. This part will use this memory as a broadcast mechanism and it will tell the story of the memory. You will talk about this memory. When you're done talking about it, you're done and the memory supposedly goes back. Well, here's what actually happens. While you're talking about the memory, you're not just broadcasting it into the world, you actually expose it to changes. Whatever your friend says when you talk about your memory, whatever temperature is in the room, whatever you're doing when you're talking about the memory will leak into the memory. Maybe if you're cold, it will make the memory a little bit sour. Maybe if your friend is in a bad mood, it will change the memory to a little bit less positive. Maybe if they say something that will make you look at it in a different way, it will change how you perceive the memory. And all of that will leak into the experience and will get saved over writing the original memory. When you use a memory, you expose it to changes, and then you overwrite the original. So after tomorrow, when you talk about this memory, the new version is overwriting the original one. You no longer have the memory of this experience right now. You have a version that is tainted by your experience when you use the memory. So if in two weeks, someone asks you about this very talk, you wouldn't just load the original, you would load the modified version with the information that was there from the temperature in the room and your friend's comments. And now again, you're gonna expose it to new information and new experiences that will change a little bit more. And when you're done, you're gonna override it. So every time you use a memory, you actually open it and change it a little bit with the experiences that you're going through when you use the memory. So it's like a telephone game. Every time you use it, it's a little bit different and you never have access to the original memory unless you never use it. So it's counterintuitive. The less you use memories, the more raw they are and true to their nature. And the more you use the memories, the more they change based on how you use them. This is how we can tell a story so many times that we don't even know what actually happened in the beginning. We kind of start changing the facts, making it more clear and accessible to the people we talk about to the point that we don't really know what was the original one. It what allows our brain to keep changing and adapting things so we won't have bad experiences forever cemented in our brain. Your boyfriend dumped you. You're feeling terrible. You go to a therapist. A therapist would ask you to tell her the story. So you would load the memory and talk about it. And if she's a good therapist, she would intervene. She would say something that will make you shift framing. Maybe she would make you feel good about some things that were bad. And in doing so, she helps you change the memory so you overwrite the original with a better version. You come back the week after to the therapist, she asks you again the same story. Tell me about the boyfriend. And you load the modified memory and tell her now a different version already. And then she does one more thing to change it even more. Overwrite. The week after, a little bit more. And so after six weeks of meeting with a the therapist, you actually have a better version of the experience. You still remember the breakup, but you can see it in different light. In fact, a failure of the system is what we call trauma. It's a system where you, every time you load the memory, you just keep the original on the same place and you can't get over it. You keep reliving the experience. The boyfriend's breakup comes again and again and again without any change with information. So the brain gave us a magical tool to remember things and know what happened, but still also be able to shift and change them so we'll feel better about them. This information that was discovered in the last 10 years allows us also to intervene. When we know how memories move in the brain when we use them, we know exactly what is the memory because I ask you to tell a story and you will load all the pieces of the memory from your brain, move to a different part and I can see the memory moving in your brain, know that this is now the memory. And when you are finishing the talk, you actually will put it back and I can see it coming back. So I can actually trace memory's movement in the brain by asking you to tell me stories about your experiences. And this is really interesting because in animals, we have studies right now that allow us to not just move memories in the brain, but actually destroy them, erase memories. How do we do that? We basically make them rat in this experiment. Think of an experience that it's been through. Moving in a maze is the classical experiment. You teach the rat to move in the maze and then you ask her to recall the maze in her mind by putting in front of a movie of the maze or by giving her the cheese that was at the end of the maze and she kind of recalls the maze and does the moving of the memory from one part to the other. And just when she finished loading the memory in her brain, you give her a drug, a beta blocker, it's a drug that is 
popular with humans as well. And this drug prevents the memory being resaved. So the brain thinks it saved it, but actually it did not. Which means that the rat loaded the memory once, thought it's now done and put it back in the storage, but was prevented from doing that and lost the memory. The same thing can be done with humans. We can take humans who have been through a trauma and ask them to load the memory and tell us about the trauma. They move the memory from the trauma place to the working area where they get to talk about it. We give them a drug that will stop them from overwriting it. And effectively, this was the last time they remember the trauma. Now, this idea of erasing memory is new and risky. Memories, even the bad ones, are serving purposes. We use the memories of bad things to avoid making the same mistakes in the future. So it's not recommended necessarily to erase memories, but knowing how memories get erased and how they work allows us to, at the very least, know that we're getting better by monitoring the movement of memories and seeing how you improve. If it comes to the point where we actually need to erase a memory knowing how to do that, and also, because we know how memories move, to start working on things like copying memories from one brain to another, or even downloading memories from your brain to machines. There are preliminary studies on that. The classical ones take one mouse that knows how to move in a maze and copy the thoughts to other mice who've never seen the maze and putting them in the maze and seeing how they can just navigate it as if they've been there before, effectively copying a memory from one place to another. And also trying to do the same thing with machines where we take the memories and map them to machines that actually effectively act as this storage space, but not in our brain, but outside. The next 10 years will show a lot more movement in memories because once we understood how it works, we can now trace it in the brain, change it, erase it, copy it, duplicate it, keep it even outside the brain. Memory is fascinating because it allows us to navigate people's futures. And as we understand how it works, we also penetrate a fascinating and scary world where someone can start hacking into our brain and changing our memories. If they know that we are now in the process of moving memory from one place to another, they can intervene and change one thing that makes us think that we were a Republican when actually we are a Democrat or vice versa. And in that sense, the era of memory manipulation isn't just an era of us understanding things, it's also an era of us exposing the brain to a very scary experience which is manipulation of thoughts and memories that lead to manipulation of activity. More on how we can stop that and understand how to prevent that in the next video. Thank you.